because sound travels at a certain speed, 1130 feet per second in the air, and sounds have varying frequencies, or cycles per second, the length of each wave varies depending on its frequency. Low frequency sounds have very long wavelengths, up to 50 feet, and high frequency sounds have very short wavelengths, even less than an inch. Here's a way you can see this for yourself. You'll need speakers and a room big enough to move around in. I'll play a tone of 113 hertz, which has a 10-foot wavelength. Because it's a single tone, a sine wave actually, each wave is very simple, and you can hear where the high volumes are and the low volumes are by moving around in the room. I want you to find a spot where the volume is loud, then move around until you find a spot where the volume is quiet and notice how far away it is. What you'll see is that the loud spots and the quiet spots are two or three feet apart. So get up and walk around the room while this plays over your speakers. Did you notice that the volume changes occurred about every two and a half feet? Well, look at the wave. It starts at zero pressure, then at one quarter of the wavelength, or two and a half feet, it's at maximum pressure, the loud part. At halfway, or five feet, it's at zero pressure again, a quiet part. At three quarters of the way, or seven and a half feet, it's at the highest negative pressure, which is another loud spot, and then at 10 feet, it's back to zero. That's why you hear the changes in volume every few feet. Now let's try the same thing with a higher frequency and therefore a shorter wavelength. This frequency is 1130 hertz, so its wavelength is one foot long. Its highest pressure is found at a quarter of the wavelength too, but that's only three inches into the wave. And you can find the loud and quiet spots just by moving your head from side to side. Here goes. <laughs> Besides being pretty irritating, did you notice that large changes in volume happen over just a few inches? I could play 11,000 hertz, whose wavelength is about an inch long, but I think you get the idea. Low frequencies have long wavelengths, and high frequencies have short wavelengths. Here's why this matters. If you know about wavelengths, you can know how sounds react when they encounter an obstacle. Because any sound with a wavelength that's larger than the obstacle encounters bends right around the obstacle as though it weren't there. Let me give you an example that you probably know. When a teenager drives by in his car playing music with the windows up, what do you hear? Right? Low frequencies, not high ones. The reason you hear this is because the wavelengths that are larger than the openings in the car, which are at least several feet apart, go around and out of the car like it wasn't there. And the wavelengths that are shorter than the openings in the car are reflected back into the car. Now, if the car was airtight, the sound couldn't come out. But neither would you, because you'd suffocate. And if it's loud enough, the sound on the inside can vibrate the car and the car will recreate some of the sounds on the outside. But that's a different thing called sound transmission. Wavelength determines whether or not a sound is reflected by something in its path. It's actually the primary reason you have trouble figuring out which direction bass is coming from or where a subwoofer is. Because when the wavelengths get much longer than the distance between your ears, your brain loses one of its primary ways of determining direction, the difference in loudness between your ears. Because long wavelengths are not blocked by your head, the volume is the same in both of your ears. Shorter wavelengths are reflected by the side of your head that the sound is coming from, and your brain uses the ear that hears the sound loudest to determine the direction the sound is coming from. 
It's also important to understand this principle when you're miking things on stage. Low frequencies coming from your subwoofers, the drums, and bass are not reflected or absorbed by obstacles on your stage, like all the stuff up there and the people in your audience. And they're picked up easily by every microphone on your stage. That's why using the high pass filter on your mixer is so important, to cut away those stray low frequencies on every mic you can. So the next time someone wants to make the drums quiet by putting a plexiglass aquarium around the drum kit, you can tell them it's only reflecting the higher frequencies to a different part of the room, and the lower frequencies go right around it. I'm Greg Hill for AV Genius.